atheism what is atheism atheism is the absence of belief in any god god or spiritual beings it is the absence of belief in the existence of deities or the rejection of the belief that any deities exist the word atheism comes from a meaning without and theism meaning belief in god or gods atheists don't use god to explain the existence of the universe atheists say that human beings can devise suitable moral codes to live by without the aid of a god god creeds or scriptures people are atheists for many reasons such as they find insufficient evidence to support any religion they think that religion is nonsensical they once had a religion and have lost faith in it they live in a non-religious culture religion doesn't interest them religion doesn't seem to be relevant to their lives religion seem to have done a lot of harm in the world the world is such a bad place that they can't be a god many atheists are also secularists who advocate for the separation of the state from religious institution and are against any special treatment given to organized religion it is possible to be both atheist and spiritual or religious in some form this is true of buddhism confucianism and jainism as well as some religions such as judaism Atheists are as moral or immoral as religious people. In practical terms, atheists often follow the same moral code as religious people based on conscience and moral knowledge of what is right and what is wrong. But they arrive at the t- decision of what is good or bad without any help from the idea of God. What does it mean to be human for an atheist? Atheists find their own answers to the question of what it means to be human from both theological and ethical viewpoints. Not all atheists are hostile to religion, but many do think that religion is bad for these reasons. Religion makes people believe in things that are untrue. Religion makes people base the way they run their lives on a falsehood. Religion prevents people from thinking in a rational and objective way. Religion forces people to rely on outside authority rather than becoming self-reliant. Religion imposes irrational rules of good and bad behavior. Religion divides people and is a cause of conflict and war. The hierarchical structure of most religions is anti-democratic and thus and thus offends basic human rights. Religion doesn't give equal treatment to women and gay people. Therefore, it offends basic human rights. Religion obstructs scientific research. Religion wastes time and money. Most atheists though willingly concede that there are some good things about religion. For example, religious art and music, religious charities and good works, much religious wisdom and scripture. human fellowship and togetherness but again these good things can and exist without the attachment to a god god or religion there are different reasons for being an atheist the intellectual is that most atheists would offer some of the following arguments as their reason for deciding that god doesn't exist the non intellectual is that many people are atheists because of the way they were brought up or educated or because they have simply adopted the beliefs of the culture in which they grew up so someone raised in a communist place like china like communist china is likely to have no belief in god because the education system and culture make being an atheist the natural thing to do other people are atheists because they just feel that atheism is right for them Many people are atheists because they think 
there's no evidence for God's existence, or at least no reliable evidence, no verified evidence. They argue that a person should only believe in things for which they have good evidence. A philosopher might say that they start from the presumption of atheism. This is an argument about where to begin the discussion of whether or not God exists. It says that we should assume that God does not exist and put the onus on people who believe in God to prove that God does exist. The philosopher, Anthony Flew, who wrote an article on this, said, If it is to be established that there is a God, then we have to have good grounds for believing that this is indeed so, until and unless some of such grounds are produced, we have literally no reason at all for believing. And in that situation, the only reasonable posture must be that of either the negative atheist or the agnostic. So the honors of proof has to rest on the proposition. It must be up to them. First, to give whatever sense they choose to the word God, meeting any objection that so defined it would relate only to an incoherent pseudo-concept, and second, to bring forward sufficient reasons to warrant that their claim that in their present sense of the word God, there is a God. Atheists treat God as an unnecessary for various reasons. Science explains everything. Atheists argue that because everything in the universe can be explained in a satisfactory way without using God as part of the explanation, then there is no point in saying that God exists. The argument is based on the philosophical idea called Occam's Razor, popularized by William of Occam in the 14th century. Entities should not be multiplied unnecessarily. This is usually simplified to say that the simplest answer is the best answer. Therefore, atheists might argue that since the entire universe and all of creation can be explained by, un by evolution and scientific cosmology, we don't need the existence of another entity called God. Therefore, God doesn't exist. William of Ockham would not have agreed. He was a Franciscan monk who never doubted the existence of God. But in his century, he wasn't breaking the rule named after him. 14th century science knew nothing about evolution or how the universe came into being. God was the only explanation available. What William Ockham would think if he lived now is another matter to debate. Atheists say that the arguments for God aren't convincing. There are strong weaknesses of proof that God exists. There are a number of traditional arguments used to prove that God exists. However, none of them are strong enough to convince atheists. Some of these are the design argument that the universe is so beautiful, complex and orderly, and that it must have been designed, and only God or a supernatural being could have designed it. Therefore, since the universe exists, God must exist. Atheists refute this by saying that actually the universe is not particularly beautiful and orderly. And even, even if it was, why should there be a designer? And modern science shows that most of the natural things we think of as designed are just the products of processes like evolution. The ontological argument. We think of God as a perfect being. If God didn't exist, he would be perfect. God is perfect, therefore God exists. Most atheists think this argument is so feeble they don't bother dealing with it. Professional philosophers usually reject it on the grounds that existence is not a property of beings. The first cause argument that everything has a cause, therefore the universe must have had a cause. That cause must have been God. Therefore, since the universe exists, God must exist in order to have caused it to exist. An atheist might respond by asking, what caused God? And if God created the universe, 
who created God. The argument might proceed that if God didn't need a cause, then maybe the universe didn't need a cause either. If God was already perfect before he created the universe, why then did he create it? How did it benefit him? Why would he bother? And if the universe was caused, perhaps something other than God caused it. The existence of evil seems inconsistent with the existence of a God who is wholly good, benevolent, omnipotent, and can do anything. Most religions say that God is completely good, knows everything, and is all-powerful. But the world is full of wickedness and bad things keep happening. So this can only happen if God is unwilling to prevent evil, in which case he's not good, or God doesn't know about evil, in which case he does not know everything, or God can prevent evil, in which case he's not powerful at all, or some combina- combination of all of the above. And so there is no being that is completely good, knows everything, and is all-powerful, and so there is no God. Theologians and philosophers have provided various answers to this argument. They all agree that it gives useful insights into the nature of God, evil, and belief. For most of human history, God was the best explanation for the existence and nature of the physical universe. But during the last few centuries, scientists have developed solutions that are more logical, more consistent, and better supported by evidence. Atheists say that these explain the world so much better than the existence of God. They also argue that far from God being a good explanation for the world, it is God that now requires explaining. In olden times and still today in some traditional societies, natural phenomena that people didn't understand, such as the weather, sunrise and sunset, and so on, were seen as the work of God, gods or spirits. The Old Testament portrays the world as something controlled by God, where we would see the weather as obeying meteorological principles. People in those days saw it as demonstrating God at work. And it was the same with all the other natural phenomena. They just showed God doing things. For the ancient Greeks, everything was full of gods. The Greek philosopher Thales moved things on by suggesting that the gods were actually an essential part of things rather than external puppeteers pulling strings to make the world work. Myth and magic. But there was more to this ancient explanation than gods doing things in or to the world. People saw the whole universe in a religiously structured way. They had no other way to see it at the time. For instance, God provided the power that made the, the universe work, and God provided the structure within which the universe worked and human beings lived. Ideas like that survive in modern astrology. Many people believe that their lives are in some way influenced by the movements of heavenly bodies like planets or stars. And and the heavenly bodies concerned have names taken from mythology and religion. And you'll find similar ideas in most popular religious thinking. Many people still believe or want to believe in the idea of God as a puppeteer. They believe that God is able to do things in the world He can divide the waters of the Red Sea to save the Israelites from Pharaoh. He can respond to prayer by healing an illness or getting someone through an exam. Cosmology is the study of the origin and nature of the universe. Today, it's a branch of astronomy and physics, but in pre-scientific times, it was a religious subject organizing the universe in terms of almost military ranks of beings. God was at the top, and human beings came pretty much at the bottom. In some cosmologies, there was also an inverted hierarchy of evil beings going down from humanity to the source of weakness, the devil, at the bottom. <laughs>